Peters Lake Park, Pennsylvania. It's six in the morning. The moon is still shining and the lake fog drifts over the water in a hurry. For less than an hour, the sun will rise. In the early fog is a group of geese. They sit amongst one another, relaxing, for there will be a long day ahead of them. The geese are not the only bird in the morning fog. A male blue heron soars easily through the lake fog, starting its all-day journey hunting for food. Despite the heron's comparable size to its smaller bird relatives, it only weighs five to six pounds. This is due to the heron's hollow bones, which allows a bird of its size to glide with ease. Sharing the skies is a flock of geese, giving us a glimpse of what is about to be sunrise. The sky turns into gold, reflecting off the cold water of the lake. The sun is out, and the day begins for many different animals. One group of animals in particular are trying to get a jump start on their day with a quick meal. But it won't be long until an unwanted visitor joins them. A female blue heron waits around the side of the lake, taking its time to start hunting, unlike her male counterpart from earlier. The compelling difference between her and the male is their size. She has a smaller stature, weight, and beak compared to the male. The geese are unbothered by her presence although they could have done without her emptying her waste where they eat. With no interest in what the geese are eating, she decides to leave. Perching herself on the top of a branch, taking in the lakeside view. As for the male, he has started to hunt for his first meal on the opposite side of the lake. A blue heron spends 90% of its waking hours hunting for food. Before the hunt, the heron gives a quick body shake and preens its feathers, some falling into the lake. These rituals are usually done when trying to attract a mate. This particular heron has no female herons around him at this time and it is most likely just for comfort. Now that his morning stretches out of the way, it's time to get our first meal of the day. The blue heron hunts by day and night. Its diet consists of mainly small fish, but it is optimistic to eating insects and other small creatures such as rodents or other birds, especially ducklings or even a baby goose known as a gosling. Although the great blue heron could get a meal out of these young goslings strolling by, he decides not to. The reason could be that it is not quite his taste or the gander and goose protecting his children close by. The heron is interested in something else though. Heron are waders and expert fishermen. Their strategy is to walk slowly in the shallow water or stand like a statue for long periods of time, stalking their prey's every move and waiting till it approaches them. He decides to take a step into the water. It immediately delivers the death to an unsuspecting fish. The heron stabs its prey with its blade-like bill before they swallow it whole. It take a sip of water after its meal to avoid choking. Due to the great blue heron's long S-shaped necks and the fact that they swallow their prey whole, they're known to choke to death on bigger meals. Watch as the blue heron attempts to bite off more than he can chew. Thankfully, he was unable to swallow the rock and now has a new idea in mind. 
He's fled this spot to go and find better hunting grounds, for the day is just beginning. It's afternoon, and the lake is alive. The woods that surround the lake showcases all types of nature. Those that are dead, those that are living. These woods particularly showcase something very special, a blue heron nest. Great blue herons nest mainly at the highest point of trees, usually 20 to 60 feet above the ground or water, away from predators. Herons collect much of the nest material, gathering sticks from the ground and nearby shrubs and trees. Nest building can take from three days up to two weeks. Not far from the nest, the daylight and smooth breeze expose the beauty of the plants and water lakeside. Behind such beauty waits a hunter. The blue heron senses his prey. Standing like a statue, just waiting to pounce. Longer and longer he waits, stalking his prey, waiting for just the right second. For if he strikes too early or too late, he will leave this hunting spot empty-handed. The heron steadies onto a branch and readies his attack stance, showing the curve-like S-shape of his neck, building up momentum to deliver his death blow. He desperately needs a big catch. For breakfast was just way too small of a meal. The heron now creeps into the shallow waters and hopes that his waiting will bring out his prey. He steadies his neck it prepares for a quick strike. The death blow is delivered. He shakes the fish, breaking its bones for an easier swallow, for he has already almost choked earlier this very morning. Down the hatch it goes, in a drink of water, one last precaution to avoid choking. Although the meal doesn't look like much, our feathered friend is very pleased with himself. He checks under the log for any easy catches he may have missed and wipes his beak afterwards until something catches his eyes. Another squad of ducks, the type of meal this heron has been looking for all day. But fortunately for the ducks, they're all but just too big for the heron to swallow and surely outnumber him. The heron lets the ducks pass in peace, hoping that his night is more promising than his day has been thus far. Midday hits a standstill. The waters are calm and unactive. The day's sunlight bleeds through the lake's rugged trees before evening inevitably arrives. It has reached golden hour. The geese are getting their last swim in before it's dark. As for the ducks, they've had their fair share of swimming and decide to relax on a nice log. Stretching and preening their feathers.
the rest cruised the sky. Other animals would rather stay in the shade. A herd of deer are foraging for some food. Young bucks dominate the food in the surrounding area. The bucks push their younger halves around, deciding on who gets what amount of food. Our familiar feathered friend makes his way down a dead tree. and continues his evening resting on a branch. He wades amongst the bushel and blends with the trees, hoping to finally find an acceptable meal. He targets something in the waters, arching his neck and powering his fatal strike but all the waiting seems to be a waste. Whatever he saw is no longer there. The hours count on and there is no daylight left. Soon it will be completely dark, so the heron must act quick. He flies to a dead tree, then hops to the lake alone. He is desperate for a catch, no longer waiting but now full-blown hunting his prey down. But not for long. Something else grabs his attention. The heron is slowly wading through the water, hoping to stumble upon an unsuspecting fish. He has a fish locked in his sights. He strikes. With nothing again, the heron stretches and shakes the water off his feathers. Towering over the lake, hungry from a failed day of catches, he resorts to what he knows best and stands still. Fish stir up the water around him. He stretches his neck and prepares an attack. He strikes, but nothing again. The sun sets. It is officially night. The moonlight bleeds through the tree leaves. Soon it will be too dark for us to see, but that does not stop our feathered friend. The heron returns once again to the middle of the lake, for he was almost lucky on two occasions while here. Through what we have learned from watching the heron throughout the day is that he will continue to do what is necessary until he is fulfilled. Now how many times the heron fails, he attempts again. He is determined and faces adversity and obstacles without backing down. What we can take from watching the heron is that patience and determination will lead to a big catch, whether that being a fish or a long-term goal. Learn from your failures and then try again, like our friend, the statue on the lake.